Zacchaeus. I love that story. Mm -hmm. When Jesus preaches his first sermon, as it's recorded in the Gospel of Mark, it is one sentence long. Mark has a habit of shortening things up as much as possible. And what Jesus says is, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. This term, repent, is not something that Jesus uses for the first time. If you go back into the Old Testament, you find that this is something that Jesus is building on that's been happening for quite a while. You can go back to prophets like Amos, Amos 4, where this prophet goes to the northern kingdom and he looks at the people who are oppressing uh, the needy and he calls them out and he says, uh, you fat cows of Bashan who go off to your resort towns, grind the heads of the uh, poor under your high heels while calling out to your husbands to go get me another margarita. Right? That, that, that repent and turn to, to the Lord your God or else you're going to have cleanness of teeth, which is another way of saying famine. And so that, that's, go back, you can find Amos. You can find... Hosea, in the 8th century, he, he goes to, he doesn't go to northern Israel like Amos, he goes to the southern kingdom of, Ju of uh, Judah, and he says, Return, Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Uh, take the words with you and return to the Lord. Take away all of our iniquity and receive us graciously. Again, this call to return, to repent. This is something that shows up in Jeremiah, it shows up in Ezekiel. Uh, when John the Baptist when people aren't coming to John the Baptist, John the Baptist sees a particular group of people coming, and we don't know why this group get treated this way, but he looks at them and he says, you brood of vipers, you come to get baptized. First, bear the fruit of repentance. Right? Show, don't just show up because it's popular to do this. Show up because you have repented, i.e., you have turned, you have changed. Don't, don't just show up and expect to look good. And so when Jesus says, repent, and believe he is doing something that prophets have been doing for centuries. And this term repent, it, it literally means turn, turn, turn towards Jesus, turn towards God, turn towards what is good and true, turn so that you are better in how we live, turn so that we are better at loving God and loving our, our neighbor. That, that's what the essence of repentance means, to turn towards a better way, to start doing what we should have been doing all along, to turn towards the, the path of following Jesus more fully. And, and so repentance was what we're looking at today, one of these words that we toss around and we need to make sure we have well defined. Uh, and and con confession and repentance are, are two parts of this. Confession is having the wisdom to be able to name how you fall short. Repentance is having the courage to actually turn and do something about it. So confession is, is naming it. Repentance is doing something about it. And they're, they're both based upon having this deep sense that there is a right and a wrong way to do things based upon both what we see in the law of Moses and then revealed in the life of Jesus. Now, I'm going to make a guess and hear it say that you have heard a call to repentance before. Has anyone ever been to a revival? Revivals, we've had some revivals. Okay. Now, usually in a revival at some point, there is the altar call, which is the, the call to repentance, the call to get it right, the call to turn towards Jesus and get your life together. And um, it, the thing about altar calls based upon someone who swoops in and what, what someone who does a revival, you know what they get to do after they, they've preached a few nights? They get to leave, right? And I've always wondered about the effectiveness, effectiveness of that. Because it smacks of the, these Old Testament prophets to me. Because Amos, for example, he swoops into the northern kingdom. He looks at a bunch of people and says, you fat cows of Bashan, you better get your lives together. And aren't you inspired to change having been insulted? Right? Isn't that our, your response? If someone yells at you and says that you're really messed up, do you ever go... Man, they're louder than me. They must be right. Anyone ever have that response? I, I haven't. It's just checking, right? And so, this, you look at the prophets, 
and you look at their effectiveness and um, it, things don't shape up often when a prophet comes to town and when the prophet Amos goes to northern Israel and, and he calls them out the, the northern kingdom doesn't go oh you're right what the northern kingdom goes is no we're, we're right you go away and, and then the northern kingdom falls to the invasion of Assyria and the same thing happens with Hosea in the southern uh, country of Judah the two nation the two tribes that make up Judah when Hosea goes to them and says you really should turn your lives around they say no we shouldn't buzz off and, and then they fall to the invasion from Babylon a little bit later and so often when we look at the words of the prophets and their call to repent, what, we, what we're looking at is a record of a call to repent and how it's been ignored. And so hopefully uh, we can learn from them, learn uh, from that call to repentance and not be quite so stubborn. And it's easier to hear a prophet in writing than to hear a prophet actually being the one yelling at you in front of you. I, I assume it's a lot easier. But I do think we need to look at how do we read the prophets? How do we, how do we think through how we're going to repent as a way of life? Because it's not like you repent once, repent, done, and you're, you're, you're good forever. It's repentance is a way of continuously turning more fully towards Jesus. Because each year, hopefully, we are more Christ-like. Each year, we are, we're, have opportunities to become more like him. Uh, hopefully, we are more Christ-like now than when we first started following and so what does it look like to practice repentance in a way that doesn't involve any yelling, right? I think it, two things are needed. First, and both involve looking at Jesus. First is to look at how Jesus handles Zacchaeus, and the second is going to be to know why it's worth doing. So Zacchaeus, cute song, right? Zacchaeus was a wee little man. We all know the song. We've sung it here before. Let's make sure to look, though, at what is happening here. What does it take for repentance to happen? Zacchaeus is a tax collector, which is a cross between the mob and the IRS. It's the guy who shows up and says, that's a really nice looking truck you got there. It'd be a shame if anything happened to it. Why don't you pay $500 more on your taxes? And then puts that in his pocket. Like, Zacchaeus is, yeah. Uh, and so Jesus goes and eats with him spends time with him, talks at great length with him. And out of this process of Jesus spending time with him, Zacchaeus repents. He turns, right? He turns in a way that is profound. He turns away from what he has been doing, extorting money for pe from people with government backing. And what he turns and does is says, I will give away half of my wealth, and anyone else who have wronged, I'll get squared up with. Now, if you th let's think about that type of change. If Jesus had come along, walking into town, and seen Zacchaeus, and had started out with, Hey, Zacchaeus, stop extorting, give away all your money, do you think Zacchaeus would have said, Oh, you're right. Definitely. Right? How many times do you think Zacchaeus has been yelled at? Often. He's the guy you don't want to see coming. And so, Zac Jesus, Jesus knows what needs to happen. Like, this is the... You ever look at someone and you know what they need to do? You just know it, right? But you can't tell it to them right away, can you? Because if you just go up to someone and just tell them what they need to do, are they going to listen to you? What do you need to do before people listen? What does Jesus do? Jesus doesn't look up and say, stop being an extortionist. Jesus looks up and says, let's go grab dinner. And then they go and they have dinner. Right? And then they have dinner. Can you imagine the conversation there? Like, maybe Jesus asks, so do you think your kids should go into this field? Well, well how's this working for you? You get along with your neighbors? And, and they can ask some questions, spend some time together. And uh, after some time together, and you eat a meal, and it takes a while, that's the point at which, Jesus, at, at which Zacchaeus says, yeah. Maybe I do need to change. But it's only after Jesus has spent time with him. And, and let's, let's acknowledge how big of a change this is. Like, for Zacchaeus to stop extorting money like this and to give back, it, it would be like a, a modern landlord saying, I've been charging my people too much rent, and I'm going to give that extra money back, and then I'm going to invest money to make sure that all my houses are, are livable. Right? That, that's quite the change that would be considered. It, it takes time to consider doing something like that. That's a high ask. And Zacchaeus, like, 
to his credit, he is willing to do that. If you think about Zacchaeus here, we all want to think that we're right. Anyone here think you're wrong? Anyone right? I think I'm right. I think I'm right about everything I talk about, because it's me, and I'm obviously right. <laughs> Right. And so if you're going to sit down and we're going to have a discussion in which at the end of the discussion I'm going to say I was wrong, that takes some courage. Right? I respect Zacchaeus greatly. It takes courage to say I was wrong and then be willing to do something about that. And I think it's worth naming the challenges that come with repentance. Like repentance is not just as simple as come on down to the rail, kneel, say I'm going to follow Jesus. That's great. Now begins a life of repentance, a life of turning, a life of deciding to make changes that will get some pushback. Zacchaeus, do you think he sees other tax collectors? And when he goes and sees other tax collectors, what do they do? They talk shop. And so next time Zacchaeus sees other tax collectors and they say, so, what's the, what way have you figured out to extort money out of people? And Zacchaeus goes, I don't do that anymore. Like, think about that pushback. Think about how much pushback he's going to get. Think about the pushback he's going to get from, say, his wife. Like, he's just giving away half. The, if you signed a check for half your wealth, do you think your spouse would have a few questions? Just a few. We do need to talk about that, right? Talk about it first. Right? There's some pushback. There, don't, don't rock the boat. Don't change things. Like, if we talk about repentance today, and let's say you're reading through uh, and, and you're struck by what Jesus says, um, commissions us to be ambassadors of reconciliation. It's in 2 Corinthians 5. five right? Go forth as ambassadors of reconciliation. And you read that, and you say, I want to do that. I want to change something. And you look across your family, and you see that person that your family hasn't invited to Thanksgiving dinner in 20 years. Right? Any of you have that person in your family? Or that friend that you haven't talked to in a long time? Right? And you say, I'm going to take Jesus seriously. I'm going to talk to Aunt so-and-so, and I'm going to think about inviting her to Thanksgiving. Do you think the rest of your family is going to be excited about that? Right? To repent and to say, I'm going to do something different, I'm going to change, is to invite pushback from everyone else around you who's used to the way things are. Right? And so to repent is to have, it, it, confession is the wisdom to see a change that's needed to be more like Jesus. Repentance is to have the courage to do it. And the only way that we have the courage to do it, and this is the second thing that makes repentance possible, is to know why it's worth it. To repent is to get better at following Jesus. Right? That's it. Repent is to get better at following Jesus, to turn, to get more in line with what Jesus desires, and to fully understand that we are first and foremost baptized. You know what you are before you're married? You're baptized. You know what you are before, before I'm ordained? I'm baptized. Before you're a teacher, before you're, you're employed, before you're anything else, you're baptized. You are forgiven. You are welcome to follow Jesus each and every day of your life. And to follow Jesus is the most beautiful thing we can do. And it is worth it to repent because it brings us closer to Jesus. And so, if there is one thing that, that makes repentance possible, it's, it's not just spending time to listen to people, to talk about things that matter. It's being aware that when something comes up that is challenging, we're reading the prophets, we're looking at what, what's happening is that, that change is worth it, right? Whether it's the, the small change. I, in this last year, I, I took some visits out to the coast, and, and I, I talked to a lot of people from various backgrounds, and I realized some of the ways that my language needs to change. Like, I used to call things ghetto when they weren't uh, up to snuff, when they weren't kind of haphazard. I'd say, that's kind of ghetto. I can't say that anymore. But I spent too many people with people who time who, who lived in the ghetto and, and that that's racially charged like ooh and they pointed that out and you think it's comfortable to have language pointed out man Andy that's kind of like I can either get defensive and say you know what that's that's just how people talk in the Midwest or I can say thank you for helping me love my neighbor a bit better right so I, I don't say ghetto anymore I'm trying if I do please tell me I'm trying real hard not to but it's, it's it, yeah, it takes some time. Or, or uh, over the last year, I've had, ha had some people help me see how much I need to grow when it comes to uh, leading uh, groups, leading small groups, leading youth. Um, 
And, and so that has, I can either take that as an affront to my, my personal competence, or I can go get some help, and I can say I need to change, and I need to get better, and I've gone up to my friend up the road at Kirksville, who happens to be leaders of the Christian Education Fellowship of America, who then gave me the book that we're going to be using for the Bible study this fall, and I'm not leading it, so I can watch someone who's far better than me, because I have things to grow. I have places I need to grow and get better. I need to repent and change and, and, and get better at what I'm doing, right? I can either get angry at someone's pointed out how I have fallen short, or I can be glad that they're going to be able to help me to get better at following Jesus. Right? I, it is worth it to get better at following Jesus because that's the most beautiful thing we can do. Right? So I, I hope that each one of us has a few people that we can turn to and ask when we, when we may have messed up, maybe when we're not sure if we've messed up, and trust them to sit down, have a cup of coffee, sit down and have a meal, and listen. And further, I hope, I pray that each of us is able to hear that when someone, that we're in these discussions, when we're talking about what might need to change, it is not a threat to what matters. It is an invitation to become more like Jesus. And that's worth it. Right? It is always worth it. To know that repentance is the way to live more like Jesus, to experience a bit more of this kingdom today, to be more pointed towards the kingdom that is to come tomorrow. Amen.